idea, the idea behind this film was to make it uh, very similar to a lot of my art, and then I throw it out there and then let the, the Holy Spirit work with you, meet you where you're at. So I'm, I'm really tempted not to explain the film to you right now. <laughs> and I'd just like to ask you, uh, well, what, what's your feedback? As the first audience to see the entire film, <laughs> uh, what did you think? There's no right or wrong answer. Yeah. Yeah, and I think this is what we do here at the church. This is a place of worship where we come to learn about the Bible and about God. And everyone comes in here because the church is open to everyone. And someone from the church will welcome them. They go to them and welcome them. And in the fam, once he was welcomed by one person, the same like them, everyone pretty much Sure. Yeah, so that's what we do. We sure. welcome everyone. And we want everyone to feel comfortable here at Christ Church. And to learn about the <coughs> God's Word. So. That's fantastic. I, I think that's what Christ models for us, right? Show up as you are. You don't have to pretend to be something that you're not. You don't have to hide what you're, what you're dealing with, but he, he loves you right, right where you are. Uh, yeah. For me, the level of amplified sound was painful. If I didn't have these to take 30 decibels out of the sound spectrum. Well, so you know what? If you watch it online, you can turn the volume down. To the point yeah. that you can sit through noise, or am I just ultra oversensitive? No, you're, you're spot on. It was, it was bothering me too, and that was due to a, a lack of a proper sound check. I'm not an audio guy, so that's the cathedral sounds. Yeah, <laughs> but I guarantee you, you watch it again online through your computer. You can adjust the volume down to your comfort level, and, and it should be a completely different film. Thank you. Yes. Um, I thought it was that you know how we were playing the Right. Uh, there, there's a there's a saying that says unless unless you confronted your your, your own true self and, you, and you've dealt with the pain in your own life, you cannot come alongside somebody else with in their. You have to look at the pain in your life and deal with that so that you can be empathetic and, and come along and, and help other people that are hurting. Yes. I was a little taken aback when the person uh, they they throw me. Yes. And I, I thought that kind of you know was not what I anticipated. So what was uh, I mean? I guess I could go inside and why, but what is the motive of that action of them throwing them out of the church? I what mean, do you think it is? <laughs> well. The, the question being, what is the motive uh, of the ushers to, to throw the guy out of, out of church? What, why do you think they did? Well, because he wasn't one of them. Because he wasn't one of them. I mean, yeah. that could be one reason. And then obviously he wasn't in the same spiritual realm as them. Yes. Yeah, but you know, a lot of times, that that's what I was trying to show with the first film, was, was a group of people that are, are saying, hey, I don't care what you're dealing with, you need to, to suck it up and move forward. You need, you need to put on a happy face and not be real with what you're struggling with. This would be the same as, well, somebody has it worse somewhere else, so just deal with it. That's not what Christ teaches. But you see that in a lot of, you might see that in, in family units, you might see that at work, you might see that at various churches, not this church. Um, you know, it, 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 yeah, I mean, we're all broken people. And so at some point, every one of us is either going to be on the on the receiving end or the giving end of that interaction. So if the we, first thing was they got, they pushed him away. Yeah. And then on the last one, those people just suck him. Yes. And so the, the idea is if you're not able to be free with, with who you are and what you're experiencing, 
If the people around you expect you to, to put on a face and pretend to be something that you're not, where do you go with that? Right. Where do you go when you don't feel free to be who you are? That leads you to part two. And in part two, you have a whole bunch of people that say, live in your pain. That's who you are. I am the person that got laid off. I'm the person that got raped. I'm the person that got kicked out of my home and now I live over here on the street. I'm, you know, and, and embrace that and say, that's who you are. Uh, I met a guy the other day at an event and his name tag said, cancer free date. Now I'm really, just, just go with me for a second. I'm very excited that, that he is cancer free, right? I mean, that's, that's a big thing because cancer is ridiculous. Ridiculous. And, and Dan survived that. But the first thing you see about him is cancer-free Dan. He identifies himself by what happened to him, not by who God made him to be. Does that make sense? And, and so in, in that warehouse, everybody is saying, this is who you are. You're the alcoholic, embrace the alcoholic. You're the drug addict, embrace the drugs. Take on more stuff. That's who you are. And, and forget these other people who are telling you not to do that. And so that's why we tried to, to show that, um, like, all the masks are representative of what we're experiencing, okay? So in the first film, it's all face masks, it's all circus. But in the second film, we change from face mask to head mask to, eventually, this guy. Which we uh, affectionately call depression. Where... Where what you're experiencing or what you've gone through is no longer something that you can take off and put back on, but it is it is consumed you, and it's become who you are to the point where you get to the, the woman in, in the window, which we call agony, where you're stuck in the environment and there is no escape. Like that, that's just who you are. You've totally given up. And so, where I was trying to show is you can either deny what's happened. Or you can become a victim of it, which is the bondage piece. Or you can look at it with a third option, where, where yeah, you recognize, yeah, there is hurt there. And you can, you can confront that. You can, you can be real about that. You can take that to Christ. You know? And when you look at yourself, then you're able to live with other people, meet them where they're at. Uh, I was super excited to have my buddy Sylvester uh, step into the role of Christ for my film representing how we are to love each other, how we are to love ourselves in the midst of all of it. Because you'll notice in that third group, some people did not have masks on. They, they were able to be authentically themselves. Some people had a sad mask on, like I'm experiencing pain. And other people were, tend were pretending that everything was okay. And Christ is right in the middle of it, accepting everybody right where they were. And I believe that's that's his message to, to all of us. And so that's what I was trying to share with him. All the way in back. It's kind of ironic that um, you just couldn't be who you want to be inside the church. And you had to, you had to, yeah. the person had to be uh, received outside. That's where the change came. Where right. he was able to take the mask off outside inside the church where you would feel the freedom to, to be yourself and to pour out your heart there and say, this is what has happened. And now I have the support around me because most of the time I know I, for me, I feel at home inside this church, inside the church where my friends are. Sure. And it was just too bad for him that he had Outside where everybody else is busy with their own issues. I just think it's done on the corporate. Yeah, no, no, I, thank you for sharing. Um, the reason that, that we, we did that is because Christ is not Christ is not stuck in a box. Christ can move anywhere. Right? And and, and I didn't grow up going to, to a, a, a Christian church, and a lot of the Christians that I met as, as a kid told me that I was wrong, they were extremely judgmental, 
and and they were taking their truth and shoving it down my throat. That is not the picture that Christ gives us, but it's still out there. You know, I mean, we're it, it's not in every church, but it's in some churches. In the film, I used a church setting. In reality, it, that that same thing can happen in the home or in, in the workplace. You know, I and I. I'm extremely grateful for, for Mike and, and the entire group here at Christ Church uh, Cathedral to let us shoot in this space because it is a beautiful space. But it's it, we're trying to follow Christ, but sometimes we get a little caught up in, 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 in ourselves or thinking, hey, if you're coming in here, you need to dress a certain way. Or, hey, you need to, to, to live a, a certain way. Or you need to vote a certain way. Or you need to, I don't know, only eat beef. You know what I mean? I mean, we come up with all these different labels. Or, or hey, if you're going to be in St. Louis, you have to be a Cardinals fan. If you're a Cubs fan, we're going to ridicule you like crazy. Well, I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a Cubs mask. <laughs> but, I mean, the idea is that Christ says, love everybody. I'm here for everybody. And he just wants us to be be together. I'm getting up. No, no. It's not, I, I want to sort of jump off the over here. Um, one of the reasons I love that you shot the film here is that it's jarring for me to watch this happen in the space where I worship. Uh, and I think it's jarring in a really good way because it challenges, like I hear Althea and I hear Pat, and I'm so grateful that's her experience. I also know it's not everyone's experience. And it challenges me to think, Okay, in what ways are we like that? It challenges me to look at myself and say, are there ways that I put on a mask when I come in here? Uh, you know, do we really allow ourselves to be our full selves in this place? Um, and so it's, I, I'm grateful that you shot it here, A, because I think it's fantastic, B, because to me it's particularly powerful and challenging to see that first piece happening at my church. It, it makes me really think about that. You want to yeah. uh, what was scary about this is the first part that I've been to churches like that. Yeah. 90% of the churches I've been to. And I had a spouse who was not a Christian. Okay? He calls himself a Buddhist, but he was born and raised Southern Baptist. Bad Baptist. But he loves the Episcopal Church because of how he is, he's made a deal here. Yeah. Well, uh, last week was one, and it was just good because he felt part of it, even though he, he doesn't believe like we do. Uh, it was scary seeing it happen in this space, knowing this space, uh, but it was, it, it's very important to realize that that does happen in many of the churches, but well, the buildings, because the last part showed the true church. The church is not the building. The church is us. And if we allow ourselves to show forth the love of Christ, as that did, then we are we are being what we are supposed to be. Yeah. So thank you, each man. It's wonderful. I just wanted to tell you that I really liked part two, especially, because when I found about it, like, when he first goes in, I thought it had, had a very, like, seven deadly sins kind of feel to me, with all the different people that you saw, so that was really evocative, but I also liked how he started walking in innocently enough, and then the deeper he got, the worse it started seeing people were, and so it starts like that to me, like, when you start allowing yourself to fall into that bad thing that's happening to you, at first it's just happening around you, then you become to associate more and more with it until you are fully like entrenched in it and then trapped completely in it if you never get out. And so if you don't literally run screaming the other direction sometimes, or you know, almost like you hit you hit the part where you can saw like I'm trapped in this mass, now I'm like one step away from rock bottom and physically dying, being chained into it forever. I thought that was really really like emotionally connecting with how it actually feels and also the music that was going with it was totally fantastic. I mean like every single
piece of music we had going with it was just totally hitting the emotional state that I was getting when I watched it. So, thank you. Yeah, I, I think when you start going down that road, like you said, it's so subtle. You, you can, you, it's, it's just like, like Pharaoh, right? It's, 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 he's hardening his heart again and again and again and again. And then finally you're way over here and you're like, what is that? I hope that made sense. <laughs> I, I had a different take on the church. Uh, the, the first thing. The first part was called denial. And I should preface this that I've been in a state of around three or six months. I found myself a widower after 41 years of marriage in July. And I've been wearing a mask ever since then because I don't know who I am. I used to know, but I don't know that much anymore. But the thing that I thought was interesting about the church part is that when I used to love going to church, it was very, very hard for me to go back to church because it was so much fun for us. And I had to come four times before I could stay the whole time. The first time I tried to come to the doors, I couldn't two times. I left once before communion was after me. It was only the fourth time that I could stay. What I saw at that first scene was I come into church in the state that I'm in because they don't know who I am. And I look around and I wonder who else is wearing because I think everybody is denying something. So that's how I saw that scene, is that we're all denying something, I'm denying something. But what was, what was particularly spoke to me was the part about being ushered out of the church. Not that it was like security doing it or, you know, the person was disruptive or something, but in a sense, I escorted myself to the church three times because I didn't feel comfortable there. And sadly, I guess sadly, I allowed whatever the term is, my demons or my dark side or something, to walk me back out of the church because I didn't feel I could belong. So, now I had a completely different view than some people do in the church, probably because of the six months they come in. It, well, it, it's like the levels that, that we were talking about during the service today, right? I mean, we, in the film, the, the guy was ushered out by other people, but like you said, we do that to ourselves all the time. Is we look at ourselves and we think, well, I'm, I'm not worthy enough to go to go in, I, I, to be myself, or I'm I'm too much of a mess to be myself in front of other people, uh, or you know, other people are not going to accept me today, and I'm just I don't have the energy for it, so I'm just going to turn around and, and go home. And and Christ says, no, 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 no. It doesn't matter what you're experiencing. It doesn't matter what's happened to you. It doesn't matter what mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter what you've done, what you've not done. I love you as you are. Just come be with me. And be with other people. Be the body. Right? And, it, and, it's, and it's so tough because we get caught up in, <laughs> in life. And, and, and if we shift our focus from him to, to what we're dealing with here. When we're dealing with this stuff and our focus is here, Coming in and, and embracing others and loving others and meeting others becomes extremely difficult. But when our focus is up there, everything shifts. Thank you for, for sharing. Appreciate it. Uh, I've never done one of these before. I don't know where to go with this. Do you, do you think that you think you have to go through the second one to get to the third one? No. No. Uh, I, I think that that road is, is very common, uh, but I don't think, I, that's like saying God can't meet you in denial, or God can't meet you if you don't even go there, if you just live in bondage and you start there by numbing your pain with fill-in-the-blank painkiller. No, I, I think God can meet you wherever. I think God can meet you in that church building. I think God can meet you in the warehouse. There, There's... God's too big to put him in a box. Did you, did you have a problem? It strikes me as a little odd, so you could explain how you did this, that this person who comes into the church and who goes through the whole bill is apparently actually very sad and so on, and he's very masked. Yeah. It seems almost like you wanted you would have wanted to cast him as the person who came in sad 
and really showing his sadness at being rejected for that reason so, as being without a mask in the first place. Sure. So, uh, that, his sadness apparently is not really a mask. It's yeah, yeah. Where he is when he starts. No, that, 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 that's a great point. The, the reason we, we did not do that is because the masks were to symbolize uh, feelings and, and, and emotions, right? Everybody has feelings, everybody has emotions. They're not right or wrong, they're just feelings, okay? And so he comes in with his sad mask feeling. The idea is that with the face mask, you can take it off. You, you, you feel the emotion and then you can remove it. In, in part two, when it starts to envelop you, then you start moving from a base of feelings. That in part two, everybody in that film is driven by their emotions. They're not thinking about things, it's just 100% feeling. So that's why he came in with the face mask and not authentically himself, because he's, he, he, he is being authentic. It's just, this is where I'm at right now. Can you love me with this face on? Can you love me with this face on? Right now I'm really depressed. Right now I'm, I'm second guessing what I did here in your church earlier this morning and being extremely critical to myself and trying to remind myself that no, it's, it's about God, not about me. You know, can you accept me that way? So that, that's, that's the idea. Does that make sense? And then in the, in the third film, when, uh, when he finally takes his mask off, the, the color correction change was done deliberately because a lot of times when you're uh, in the middle of an addiction, and you come out of an addiction, it's like a fog lifts. And all of a sudden you can see the world as it is, not through the filter of your own emotions or, or your own experiences. You can see it legitimately. And so I wanted to show that with showing the, the bright, vibrant colors of the world as opposed to the muted colors of the rest of the film. Hopefully that, that came across. If it didn't, that's what the idea was. Uh, yeah, all the way in the back. I thought the movie, I thought the movie was a good movie. It was truly a work of art because it made the audience think, you know, it made them put themselves in that situation. A lot of times we don't really know who we are in Christ because when we come to church, we come to learn the ways of being a Christian, we, we come to die. When I saw those masks, I thought about the living dead just walking, and uh, I thought about Lazarus taking off the grave clothes. So art can uh, always be uh, uh, interpreted in different ways, but I think God is using you in a different way to teach the body of Christ. And I thank God for uh, the last scene about the person actually taking the mask outside because it showed the awesomeness of God. God can't be contained in a building and he never wanted to be in the building. He wanted to live in the hearts of man because he wanted to be a, a movie tabernacle. So I just thank you for the movie. Thank you. That's nice. You can come back anytime you want. <laughs> Sylvester, ladies and gentlemen, the guy that played Jesus Christ in the film, Sylvester Jacob. Oh, thank you. Like greetings, greetings. I just wanted to add another, another part to the math. Did, did you did you look okay? You know, I, I could have had a better shot from the left side, <laughs> right? And, you know, when the wind was blowing, I, could, I would prefer it to the right side. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I thought it was great. Thank you. All right. One of the things I would say about the mask is that, you know, we're thinking of it in terms of the mask we put on, or even the mask that somebody else perceives. And I would like to suggest that there is also another mask that happens. And, that, and that's the one I would put on you, and I want to see you in another way, where I perceive you in a particular way. And, uh, and then I characterize it according to the mask that I put on. And we do that to whole groups of people or even to our neighbor. That's all I'll say for now. But anyway, thank you. Thank you. I'll let you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.
Thank you for doing that. I thought that was outstanding. Uh, a whole different standing from all the mass from the very beginning, from the people on the outside that were switching up to come into the space. The one underlying thing that I got out of that was hope. You know, there's always a reason to be hopeful. And at the end, it's kind of like that hope came through. Uh, and I think a lot of times we live our life not really sure who or what we are, where we're going, what's going to happen, but you're always hopeful that at the end it will somehow come to you. Thank you. The idea behind this film series was to take biblical truth, to take what Jesus taught, and present it in such a way that would be palatable by people that know Christ, that do not know Christ, or that hate Christ. To, to open up the doors, to start conversations, to get people thinking outside the box, and let the Holy Spirit take it from there. Because of that, these films are online for free in their entirety, with the idea that hopefully people will share them, uh, will pass them around. Uh, so far, part one I know has been shown around the world a couple of times in other countries that don't speak English, but they still resonate with the human emotions that we talk about and the human interactions that, that happen in the film. So uh, if, you, if you'd be so kind, if you like it, or if you didn't like it, you want somebody else to <laughs> jump in on the criticism with you, share the film. If you did like it, share the film. If you're indifferent, share the film. <laughs> That way we can, we can get the message out and, and get people talking. Because Jesus said, honor God and love your neighbors. Love me, love your neighbors. Who are our neighbors? Everybody's our neighbor. And, and that's what uh, the end message of this film is supposed to be. Any other questions? I, oh, oh, okay, so real quick. Um, Seven years ago, I had an idea to create a bunch of, of short films that would be Christ honoring. I wrote out this huge list, and then the list sat in my office for five years. And I just looked at it. So I'm going to do that something. I'm going to do that something. When I get enough money, I will make all of these films happen. For five years, I put out limitations. I put it in a box. After five years, I thought, this is ridiculous. We should scrap the box, forget the money, we need to make these things happen. I'm just going to move. I feel like I'm supposed to do this, let's give it a shot. And so I went through the list of 60 plus short films, picked out the mask film, talked to Mike. We were able to shoot it here in one day, and I thought, I'll just, I'll pay for this entire thing out of my pocket because I believe in the project. All of a sudden, all the cast, the crew, everybody donated their time. They volunteered. The cast brought in all of their equipment for free. <laughs> Christ Church Cathedral donated the space for free so we could shoot them. Right? There's a parking garage down the street. And when I was talking to her about what I was doing, she said, oh, I'm a Episcopalian too. We will give you a massive donation or a discount on, on the price of the garage. What? <laughs> You know, all of this stuff just came into play, and then there was about $597 in, in out-of-pocket expenses, okay? Everybody got that number? $597. I thought, okay, well, it'll cost my time and $597. Out of nowhere, my friend writes me a check for $100, and then another friend writes me a check for $500. <laughs> I step out in faith, thinking that this is what I'm supposed to do, thinking that, that this is what God wants me to go and, and make happen, and all of a sudden the money is there. The funds are there, the, the talent, the team, all of that comes together, and it happens. I didn't know how it was going to work. I just started moving, and then God filled in the rest. And then in, uh, with part two and part three, the, the, the story continues, but it's just... For me, the whole journey of actually making this film series happen is, is, is a huge arrow pointing to Christ, saying, step out and move forward. You might not know how it's going to end. You might not know how you're going to get there. But if you move, and you move with God as your center and, and 
and, and leading the whole thing, it'll happen. And, and this whole film process was just an amazing uh, sense of, of teamwork. I had amazing cast and crew that came together. It was a collaboration following this one vision of, of Christ's message. And uh, it was great. So, can I just jump on that for a second, which is to say, one of the things that excited me so much about this project and working with Jeff is that there are so many people who need God's love and who are searching for the love of Christ who, for many, many different reasons, will never, ever come inside the walls of the church. Um, and a lot of that's because of how the church has been to people. Um, it doesn't mean we wouldn't welcome people if they came in. It's just like, it's, it's just not going to happen. And, and I saw this as, this is a chance for us to do what is in our mission statement, which is to proclaim the gospel boldly um, and reach people uh, in, way, in, in places that we would never necessarily be uh, and do exactly this. The target audience for this, if there is one, isn't generally people I think who show up on a Sunday. Maybe it's people who very clearly do not show up. Um, and so what you just stopped short of asking, I'm going to ask, which is we need to continue to support his work. Um, and so, if, yeah, if you like the movie, share the movie. If you believe in this work, write a check, click, give some gift. How can we give money to support you? And, what, and the project that's next after this, because there needs to be a next project after this. There is a next project. Okay, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, the, the next project is a documentary on fear. Uh -huh. uh, it's called Fearless, a documentary. <laughs> what do you think? It's good. It's good. Yeah. Um, as a performer, I, I've done, I average about 300 shows every year for the last 10 years. And one of the things I love about being an entertainer is that I get to cross all kinds of social lines that most people can't or don't want to. I get to meet people that look like me, that don't look like me, that believe what I believe, that do not believe what I believe, that, that have lots more money than me, and that have a lot less money than what I've got. And, and I love that. But just, despite all of the differences, everybody has one thing in common. The biggest problem I see is a lack of self-worth. People don't see value in who they are as a human being. Even in, in Christian circles, Christian circle, a lot of a lot of Christians get caught up with, I'm not worthy, I, I, I am a wretch, and I, I need Christ, which is true, but they don't get to the other side of the altar. The new creation, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. I love you. You are my beloved. And they don't live in that light and share that with people. They get caught up in, in, in all the faults. And, and I see that in people that are not Christians because they don't see value in who they are. They see value in what they do and what they have uh, and where they live and, and, and all their accomplishments. And so the idea behind the fear documentary is, is a thesis that if you have a poor self-image or don't see yourself as being worth anything, fear is going to have a massive role in your life. And as Christians, it will keep us from being who God created us to be. Being the light in the world that he initially intended for us. And if you have a strong sense of value, fear is not going to be totally eradicated, but it will be kept in check. It could be healthy. It could be a lot less unhealthy. And so for that, I have an online survey uh, asking people what they fear most, why, what they would do more of if they feared less, and to rate how much fear impacts their everyday decision making. Uh, I'm going to take the answers and I'm going to present them through actors on camera. And then I'm going to introduce or introduce interview a bunch of uh, a bunch of professionals, uh, therapists, counselors, coaches, priests, uh, doctors, people that work with the public, and get their perspective on how they've seen fear play out. And then we're going to add a third element, and that's testimonials, where we talk to somebody who has had a big fear in their life, and they've confronted it, and they've come out the other end with a positive experience. And so we'll put all that together into a, into a documentary, and then we'll do talks along with it. Uh, if you'd like more information about that, uh, you can go to tallhippo.com. That's tallhippo.com. 
tall hippo dot com. And up at the top, there's a tab for mask, and there's a tab for fearless. Click on the fearless tab, and you can take the survey. Uh, How do we give you money? I'm not good at that, right? That's why I'm making you be good at this. Thank you. Uh, you can. The, the easiest way would be to go to the mask uh, website, click on the GoFundMe link. Uh, that is still open, and you can send money there, uh, or you can write it. Uh, GoFundMe takes about nine percent of every donation. Uh, if you want 100% of the donation to go to the next film project, you can write a check. You can either uh, mail it to me or give that to, to me. And then they make out, out the check to? Tall Hippo. Tall, Tall Hippo. Hippo. Okay. Tall Hippo. Tall. And I would also say, while you are clicking and writing checks, if you really like that Christ Church Cathedral was involved in this project, and that we open up our building and this is the work that we're about, uh, we need help too. And so click on ChristChurchCathedral.us. There's a button there that says Donate. You can make out a check to Christ Church Cathedral. Um, this place needs to stay open so that we can continue to do this work. And so in addition to supporting Jeff, please support Christ Church Cathedral. It seems to me, Jeff, like Peter, you have learned to walk on water. Let's not put me up on that. That's faith. That's faith. That's how you work. That film really spoke to me. Yeah. I was a real athlete. I was a real athlete for age 10 and 15 when I was paralyzed twice because of brain tumors, brain surgery. And I had to refine myself and come out of my shame, my loss. I did it on an art, but that art was really never all together mine. This is always was a way of relifting myself up out of the shame to please others. So it should be a massive work to um, cover up the shame person I was. So it was built to me. Thank you. Jeff, if you'll look to your left, you'll see some of Tom's art. That's you. Yes. Nice job. Thank you. I have one question. Uh, you have not put the third part on your website. I just checked it, correct? You went to the website? Yes, I did. Already? Yes. I love you. I know. I'm 53. I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> but when will it be up? Because I want to show the whole this, this, this week. This week. Okay. Uh, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to premiere it here first, and then, and then it'll go online. So uh, by the end of this week, you'll be able to find parts one, two, and three individually on the website as well as the whole the completed piece and the credits will make more sense too i just we literally just finished it a week ago and i've had a lot of shows like that time for one more question or comment i once read i once read that there were really only two emotions fear and hope and as we assemble here, I know we have our hope in Christ. But there are a lot of different people out there. That second part was very fearful for me. I saw that man wandering through those corridors, confronting the mass of other people. But anyway, that's my point. Thanks. Close this out? Uh, sure. There's no manual for how to do this. Uh, I, I just want to say thank you very much for for watching, and I apologize for the, the volume level. I know that was really high. Uh, it won't be next time. <laughs> and uh, like I said, if you watch it online, you can totally control that on your own. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's customized. Um, and yeah, I, I really appreciate, once again, thank you to Christ Church Cathedral and Mike. Actually, the, the two of you that were talking about this church, I have to say, Mike and I are friends on, on Facebook, and, and to see the work that Christ Church Cathedral is doing in our community as a whole is amazing. I know so many Christians that say I am a Christian, but they don't walk the walk. They show up on Sundays, and, and then they go home. They might eat the donuts, they might drink the coffee, but that's it. 
they're out. And to see what you all are doing as a church body is, is huge, because our city is burning right now. And, and to be able to step out spirit-led and, and meet people where they are, again, whether they agree with us or disagree with us, but to be able to love them as Christ did, that's huge. So thank you for, for, for doing that. And, uh, and I really appreciate your partnership with, with this. Once again, it's Jeff Kostek. You can check it out online, tallhippo.com. If you want to do the hand motions with me, it's a lot of fun. Tallhippo.com. If you don't think you can remember that, I do have uh, business cards available. And uh, the whole film will be up in the next, next week. Uh, thank you. Let's give him a hand. Thank you all. If you would like, as you leave, uh, I'll have some of the masks from the film out on the table. Just don't squash them. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you all for coming. Even song at five.